Tiff, we have a conundrum. <sighs> Hello, and welcome to Sam Taha's Conundrum Podcast, the Rituals Edition. Uh, we are alive after the hurricane. We survived. Um, I, I, I didn't survive completely. I, uh, I still have stuff leaking in my house. I don't know why. Every place I go to, as soon as it rains, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> my life falls apart. Because LA's not prepared for rain. Uh, today, I have Maria Delegato, my friend, my stand-up comic friend and actress. Where am I uh, supposed to look? Just at you? Who is... <laughs> I don't know. Are you going to be weird now? I, just, gonna be... I need a focal point. Focal me. We're okay, talking. Okay, great. I mean, like, yeah, it's just, just us. Okay, We talk great. all the fucking time we on do. the phone. I know. Maybe and that's why. Maybe we shouldn't person. look at each other. Just, like, do this. <laughs> look away. <laughs> Hello, Maria. Hi, Sammy. I'm sorry I did this to you with the parking. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you hate me right now. You're no, like, I don't want this. I mean, I've hated people for less, but it's fine. Oh, parking because I love you. Like so, what was your hurricane experience? Never knew that there was a hurricane here a day ago. <laughs> it was barely. It was rain. We had worse rain earlier this year. Everybody was like, "No, actually, nobody was tripping." I saw. Did you see all the memes? <laughs> I. <laughs> it's thick. Here's the thing. For the first time, I every time you guys freak out, I'm like, mm, Americans. Who cares? They're just being like doing another fire drill oh and they're God, freaking yeah, out. Uh, America. Okay, great. <laughs> but then I, this time I decided to trust you guys. And I was like, nope, I'm a Californian now. I have to play by the rules. Uh -huh. And I sat home and canceled work. Well, I mean, that should happen regardless. <laughs> <laughs> when, so. I, when I moved here, I had like a, like a little uh, uh, confusion uh -huh. because I'm, I grew up learning English and French. Oh, so every time you see something with an, like, there, there uh -huh. is la. Uh -huh. There's la and le, elle. Oh. So every time I see something here, I was like, la laundry, la, <laughs> la, <laughs> I don't It was know. supposed to be LA? Yes. La yes. And I was la like, laundry. oh, wow, they're not French. <laughs> not in the French section you French? of LA. I only know how to say je suis malade, which means I am sick. Oh. And I know how to say la vache kiri, which means the laughing cow. That is the brand of cream cheese that we used oh to eat God. growing up. <laughs> You're Filipina. You should know. You don't know lavashkiri. No. Ugh. I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, I'm sorry. So the only cheese we had was those crafts. Bless things. your heart or whatever it's called. What? There's like a brand of oh. vegan cheese. Oh, yeah. oh my God. That cheese is bomb. It's uh, follow your heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Follow your heart to the trash. Whatever. <laughs> it must be nice to be able to drink dairy. I guess. I mean, when I was, I had a year because of, for OCD reasons, um, I went off dairy. And you went that, off dairy? Yeah. How did that, now I'm curious, how did that connect to OCD? Well, sugar. Oh. Causes anxiety. Oh. Anxiety is the tree that uh -huh. the apple of OCD right. grows on. Indeed. So I'm trying to reduce my anxiety as okay. much as possible. So no sugar, mm. no... Oh my God, you never had any sugar? Management. For a year. Yeah. <gasps> How Fantastic. miserable were you? Um, I would have uh, like oatmeal ice cream, uh, oat, oat ice cream at, in the fridge. Like in case of emergencies. Like oat milk, like ice cream made out of oat milk? No, or? Yeah, non-dairy non ice cream. Oh, okay. These exist, have you seen them yeah, but you, So you ate sugar? I would have like on, when I feel great. Oh. Like, okay, everything is fine. I can handle some anxiety. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat them. That is like the <laughs> motto of millennials. Like, <laughs> what anxiety level am I at? Yes. <laughs> uh, you have to choose your anxieties. You yeah. can't. Just choose your own adventure yes. for anxiety. Like, is it bad today? No. Okay, we can get 12 shots of espresso. Exactly. Instead of, the, instead of six. You know? I, I, don't, I don't have to be a good boy yeah. and only drink four or I'm, six. I'm getting a venti coffee today because yeah. my, my anxiety is okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm, I know you're making fun, but like... No, I, I'm not. I, I used know to. I have anxiety. I used to drink. You don't drink coffee. I do. Mm. But I've cut back tremendously oh, because yeah. of the Adderall. Okay. <laughs> Not by choice. <laughs> but what were you saying? I was having Adderall and drinking coffee. Oh, yeah. no. And drinking coffee at the same amounts I was <gasps> drinking before Adderall. Okay. Well, you had a death wish. That's, it, that makes no sense. You, Mr. Logical. There is, there is a problem I have, which is when I get to the base level, uh -huh. Like when I get to that, there is nothing ailing me. I don't need anything. Everything is fine. <laughs> I'm like, let's ruin this. <laughs> how can we? Love and we... self-sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> like when I, like I have, I didn't drink in a long time. But when I, when I like, when I was drinking mm -hmm. and I would have days where I'm like, oh, I can't drink anymore. I'm done. Yeah. 
four or five days after <laughs> I stop drinking and I start feeling good, I'm like, I feel great. That's Let's everyone drink. though. Exactly. Oh my God. Like, but I, in general, and I told you about this, I don't feel like, like drink. Why? Like drink because it's going to make me feel. I mean, I turn into a hoe when I drink. So <laughs> if I'm not going to get laid that night, then there's really no incentive. <laughs> and there's no incentive. I haven't gotten laid in a year and a half. So there's no incentive oh, just, whatsoever. Really, I'll admit that out loud. I'm back, I'm baby. I'm counting <laughs> years again. Oh, my God. Sammy. Like, had, had sex in April of last year. And I was like, the curse is broken. <laughs> <laughs> We're back, baby. Uh, mine was February. This Feb- February of this, this current year. Yeah. Like it was a month shy of a year i was like no this is not gonna happen and somehow somehow that energy that chaos energy came out and it happened (laughs) and sometimes you know me looking out for me and i was like i refuse i'm not gonna go another year i was and oh my god yeah then after that i was like oh i guess i have standards now so (laughs) i think if i go like i think if i have sex once a year that would be like i think i'm ready to die if that happens i'm like yeah we figured out life we're good (laughs) We're done. I That's like it. the opposite. Once I, it's like Pringles. Once a pop can't stop. I'm like, <laughs> I want it all the time. Well, yeah. When I want it, and then like, and then once I'm getting it, then it stops. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like an addict, and like my teeth are grinding, and I'm like, <laughs> where is? So I have to sex? like cold turkey, and then I just go dead inside or numb or whatever you want. To I start with being dead inside, and then <laughs> hope for the best, but <laughs> that has not changed. I mean, I'm always dead inside. <laughs> More in the context of, you know. Wait, how is the ADHD going? Really well, actually. <laughs> you're, 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 you could, you, because I remember like when, when we first met, like there was this bit <laughs> of me just like, because I, back then I just, I was just having Adderall. Oh, and I was just okay. having an epiphany because I've had ADHD my entire life. And then. Don't most of us do? <laughs> I mean, kidding, yeah, <laughs> but that's the sad part is that we all have ADHD and yeah. we've all been said to, hey, shut the fuck up and just fucking work. And you're like, I can't. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, but like I, I uh, the ADHD did something or it does something to your personality where it, it there is this part of you mm-hmm. that knows, or at least in my case, that knows that if I look nice now, I'm actually an idiot. What? Like if I if I appear to be like well put together, yeah, because I failed in so many like uh, random um, simple tasks, okay. I couldn't do them because of ADHD, uh-huh. like following directions. Yeah, like hey Sam, go get me that thing from the chair that looks like this color, mm-hmm. and I would go look at the chair, and I don't have the patience to focus oh, to look yeah. for the thing for two seconds. So I'm like, yep, here's the chair, nothing on it, bye, yeah. and I'll go back. <laughs> So you carry with you oh my God. a little secret that you only know that you're an idiot. Oh, no. If everything else, if people look at you now and you look competent, you are getting away with something. Just quickly go home before they find the secret. Yeah, so, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And imposter syndrome, and I have the same thing you have, like old comedians have. Yeah. After you get a good joke, uh-huh. if you land a good joke and everyone laughs and you're like okay that's it I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't need to ruin it and try any other jokes I oh. leave on a big laugh on a good laugh right. and leave mm-hmm. so when I do something and I feel people are impressed uh-huh. by something well I, I did yeah. I want to leave I'm like no we, let's, we must leave on a high note we're not gonna wait yeah okay I get need that. to fuck it up and look like an idiot later yes so imagine if that happens in the Uber and like suddenly oh. I land as soon as they get in the car I land like a couple of really good jokes and two good observations and they're like, this is the best Uber ride ever. Oh, my God. And I'm like, 45 minutes to oh, go. Oh, no. You got to face it out, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. You can't go ham as soon as they get in it. there. You got to let them warm up. And first of all, I don't even like talking about Uber drivers. I'm like, oh, God. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, so ADHD now Uber drivers trumps ADHD. What is your <laughs> problem with Uber drivers? I don't want to talk. Oh, okay. Oh, you don't want to talk to them? I just don't want to. Yeah, because most. Okay, my experience with with the most experience was I took the I took an Uber to work and home for every day for like a year. So, mm. cause I didn't have a car at the time. And so it was really cheap. So it was like, okay. Um, and every time I would be like sitting there dreading, like, please don't be a talkative motherfucker. Cause I just got off work. I don't care. And this one dude, oh my God, punch him in the face. He refused to let me, he refused to not let me talk. Like he would not let me sit there in silence when I was clearly giving him the cold shoulder. I was like, uh huh. And then finally, I was like, this motherfucker's not gonna, he's not gonna quit. So I finally like engaged and then I gave him the worst review ever. I was like, <laughs> you're an asshole. 
Like you, I don't know what your fucking deal is. I don't know how much validation. Wait, wait, wait. So let, let's, because I, I have this thing where I would gauge if yeah. they want to talk or not. Right. By how you're doing. But when I ask them, uh -huh. hey, how are you? Or how are you doing today? Yeah. If I get like, I'm doing all right. And then followed by a piece of detail sure. about their life. Absolutely. I'm like, they want to talk. Yes. But if I get the, I'm good, you. I'm like, you know how to read a room. I'm doing it right. Bye. This asshole either didn't know how to read a room or he didn't give a fuck because he would not stop. And he's asking you questions about yourself yes, or just he, talking about him. Yes. He kept asking me and he kept pushing. And I was like, what part? Like, are you serious? Like, do I have to say it out loud? Like, I don't want to be an asshole. But like, it was so obvious. Okay. And and you can tell by my facial expressions. I It is hard. Like, there are times where my coworkers have to be like, snap your face out. <laughs> There's a customer. Oh, sorry. Sorry. This customer's trash, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, so like it's very obvious. Like I give, you can see, you can read my energy easy. He knew what the fuck he was doing. So I, I, I put on his thing. Like I never, I, I put on my app. I never want this person to pick me up ever again. I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, do you need that much of an ego? Like, I hate having to validate people. I hate mm. having to give valid. It's one thing if I'm like complimenting you and you do a good job, and I'm like, good job, yeah when it's warranted or when, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that. But when people- But it's natural. You don't it, feel like exactly. you have to manufacture it. 100%. But if I feel like, if I if you need that constant validation and you need, like like Cat Williams said, it's called self-esteem. Esteem for yourself. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh, I can't and you, stand You it. can feel it. I when somebody needs something and yep. I, that's, I'm like, I'm stubborn. That triggers a stubbornness in me mm -hmm. when I feel like, Oh, you want this? Oh, you want this thing so hard? <laughs> oh, you're never. We have a never joke. We have a joke in Egypt. I think I told you that joke before. Uh, it's two people who are about to be sentenced to death, mm -hmm. and they're like about to go die, and like the guy's asking them. So uh, the first guy, huh, do you have any last wishes? And the guy went like, I want to see my mom. I want to see my mom. So I was like, okay. He went to the other guy. He's like, do you have any last wishes? He was like, I don't want that guy to see his mom. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's that's the certificate. Oh, that is so satisfying, right? I'm an awful person. So I am. I, okay with I would do this. Like when I feel somebody like I want this so bad, I'm like that guy oh doesn't see his mom. God. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I understood Arabic because I feel like it'd be funnier in Arabic. Yeah. Da my shuf shu omu. Da my shuf shu omu. Oh my gosh, that is that is great. That is a great. That's great even in English. See. <laughs> So that's, that's, I, as soon as somebody, oh I feel someone yeah. needs it and I'm like, oh, okay. And you're like, oh, fuck off. I will do anything not to give it to you. Yes. I will do everything in my power to not give you what you It sucks. Want. It sucks because I, sometimes I'm in their feet and I, I'm in their shoes and I want something really hard. And I was like, why doesn't anyone want to give it to me? I'm like, uh, yeah, because people can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just an energy. For sure. How did we get here? I don't know. Which is what, ADHD. Of, what this podcast is. Adderall hasn't called. kicked in yet, I guess. Ooh. <laughs> But you're it's very a slow burn one. Wait, but I, I like because again, back to the Adderall. Mm -hmm. I when I was taking Adderall, I was nothing changed in my life. Mm -hmm. I was taking Adderall next to weed, oh next to which was great. Okay. But you, I like your discipline. Like you, as soon as you started taking Adderall, you're like you have a tell us about your method. <laughs> I don't know who's us, <laughs> but just say stuff. It's like the royal we. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm God. Ah, yeah, you and every man says the same shit. Um, <laughs> so I don't, well, because it's, it's so funny. First, I have to preface with how like anxious and worried I was about taking Adderall because I have done, I've done drugs, you know, many, not many, you know, I've done like the, the common one, but anytime anyone ever offered me Adderall, cause it was, everyone's always trying to get me drunk or drugged or whatever. And I'm like, wow, no. But anytime anyone offered me Adderall, I'd be like, oh, I don't do drugs. <laughs> you could offer me a joint. You could offer me a line. I'm like, yeah, let's give it. That seems that seemed like people do like MDA. Like you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I accidentally took ecstasy. Well, anyway, that's not. Point being, I've taken it. Okay. But, but then someone offers me Adderall. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to mess with my brain chemistry. <gasps> and I, I'm trying to work on a joke because I think. It's so funny to me that like, could you imagine if I had taken the Adderall? Like what kind of, 
like reaction like i just start doing homework or reorganizing their pantry like is your mom particular about this like setup i feel like it could be more efficient you know <laughs> yeah yeah so just start organizing the party yeah. instead of partying you're like, like we could have planned this better we're not utilizing the yeah. space like all people enough. dressed in red yeah. dance this side <laughs> i'm just like could you imagine so now so then when i started when i got the prescription i was like the night before i was having anxiety over it and i'm pretty sure i took a xanax <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I don't think like when when we talked about doing the podcast and you were like but I don't have OCD and I was like just come <laughs> just well, come on the podcast I don't I might have like a mild. you you have like you're pre OCD <laughs> like you have you or me before I realized that I have an issue oh. because I used to have everything else there's a lot of like stuff that I mm -hmm. feel like oh if this happened to me that's the end of my life yeah or if if I like like same thing with Adderall having anxiety mm -hmm. the night before it's the the all of the playing of the scenarios yeah so yeah you're you're you don't officially have it no but, but you're you one know, of us i think we did talk about how i i you, you said pre like i have tendencies mm -hmm. and if i were to let them you know like i i don't know how how i would explain it but i basically am like i when i feel that tendency coming on I'll be like, no, you can't because we don't have time in our lives to be OCD. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's too much as it is. But like, there's little things that I've told you about before. But like, if I touch something, okay, so this is like, this is a, for sure got to be an OCD thing. But like, if sometimes if I'm doing something and my leg touches the toilet, oh my God, it's like an explosion in my head. Wait, wait, wait. So you're cleaning something in the bed? Yeah, like if I'm reaching for something and my leg accidentally like touches the, the bottom of the toilet. And this is like a naked leg or are you yeah, wearing like something? Yeah, like on my skin. Oh, okay, your <laughs> skin. It's like fucking <laughs> out. So your skin touched the rim of the outside of the toilet. Yeah, like maybe the bottom, like the porcelain part, whatever. Not like the toilet seat. Oh, wow. So like, I'm like okay, losing my mind in my head. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fucking die. So there are times where I'm like, I just got out of the shower and that happens. And I'm like, I want to get back in and shower all over again or at least wash my leg but then I'm like that's where I'm like stop being a fucking bendeja like don't be a little princess don't be a bitch like just get on with your life I'll give myself a little like like if I'm I don't know like if there's a Clorox wiper if there's like a wipe or something then I'll just wipe it and it's there's not a machete I'll cut my leg quickly <laughs> exactly exactly that's exactly just cut this piece of flesh off like you get bit by a zombie <laughs> chop the arm you're good that's that is like how it works so it and i know logically it doesn't do anything like but what is it, there's no logic in ocd but what is the no. story in your head like you touch I'm, i feel dirty you're i disgusting. feel like i'm just okay. i feel right. gross i'm like oh that's there's poop there now even though there's no poop there there is poop particles i don't know why this podcast exactly. keep coming back to poop particles i know <laughs> i saw i was dying i was watching that episode <laughs> But no, like, so I know that like, okay, that one little thing is not going to do anything, but it doesn't matter. I feel it and I know it's there. So sometimes I'll give my leeway and be like, okay, you can just wipe it on, wipe something. Or I'll just be like, shut up. You have, you got to go do shit. You don't have time for this. You but know? you, it's a good job. That's, that's the hardest part. Is yeah. Just... Like I, I will mentally like, and sometimes I'm like, oh, that's too much work. <laughs> like having low self-esteem. That's a lot of work, bro. <laughs> Did that get better? I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But did that get better with uh, the ADHD medication? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it it got worse or better. I I haven't noticed any like significant change mm -hmm. because even before I was ever on medication or even diagnosed or or even thought I had ADHD, um, I remember I went to Guatemala for like a week, and my friend who I went with, she was a, a number of people, but. My friend, when I were talking and she was like preparing me because she knows that I'm a princess and I like things a certain way and I'm very like, I like my pretty things and I like... Nice. Very nice person, Thanks. by the way. All right. Oh my God. I just have to... Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just showing everybody. Yeah. That's what I was watching. I love Boba. Oh my God. We should get Boba after. Anyway. Um, so she was like telling me how everything is and like painting a picture for me. Basically saying like, bitch, you can't be bougie. You can't be this and that. And when I got there, like the whole time I was fine. I was like, I think because I knew that it you wasn't, prepared. yeah, I was mentally prepared. I wasn't like, you know, I didn't have high expect or any expectations, you know, and it was fine. Like, I'm not trying to like talk shit either on like the place. It was clean. It was nice. It just wasn't anything like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. like staying at someone's house or something. So, but she even said when we got back, she's like, I was very impressed by you. <laughs> I was like, bitch, me too. 
<laughs> but it really helps. Like a lot of times, it's the surprise makes you be like, oh, wow, I can't do my things mm-hmm. before you make me do this, whatever, get me. Like a lot of times for me, it's like, oh, somebody would come and I'm, I have OCD and a lot of yeah. times I don't want people touching my phone. Yes. And then they're like, oh, let me do this on your phone. And uh, they grab my phone and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. but everything's fine. <laughs> if they, yeah, exactly. If they told me before, I feel I would be like, yeah. Here. Yes. Yes. You can mentally prepare. You're like, I can just wipe it down. Yeah. Later. It's nothing. Or even yeah. like just the idea of right. it's not really a thing. Nothing. You know, when people mm-hmm. share phones, no one has died. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's all in that. And because then it gives you t- a chance in case you don't like the person. Be like, I don't like people touching my phone. So fuck <laughs> off. I've done that to customers a lot. Oh, really? When they're like, let me show you. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I I've I've know how to work a phone. I've had a phone for like ten yeah, years now. Like I, I know, know what how to I'm do doing, it. bro. The fuck. <laughs> people are nuts. Oh but God. again, like I think that helps too. When I see how how people are like, yeah, it's fine. I was just eating off the floor, and now I'm shaking your hands, and um, now I'm gonna put my hands in my eyes. Oh God, I freak out when I like I try not to touch my face because I work with shoes in you know, my retail job, and so I have to like really be like, oh, because. Even though like we're walking on the floor and it touches like, like it's the same, like if you're whatever, wherever shoes were, but I'm just like, oh my God, it touched my face. Oh my God, there's poop yeah. particles in my, I'm going to get pink eyes. Poop particles also. Yeah. There's poop particles <laughs> everywhere. That is my biggest fear. Poop particles. Like that's. Have you ever got pink eye? I don't think so actually. Okay, great. I've gotten a sty, but I don't think I've actually had like the gunky pink eye. Mm. So I'm not a true millennial. I don't eat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. And for regular sex, yes. <laughs> well, I didn't well, say all that. Well, regular. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, too. Like, we're ADHD. Everyone, like, okay, so this is what bugs me. Everyone, like, they call it, like, a learning disability, mm-hmm. right? But, like, I went 38 years raw dogging <laughs> life with ADHD, <laughs> and I learned just fine. If I wanted to. Like, math was my biggest hurdle. So I know for sure that the ADHD caused me to, like, really struggle because I, didn't, I couldn't focus. I don't want to pay attention because it wasn't interesting. But more, I don't, it's not a learning disability. It's just that based on the standards that society has set for how you learn, mm-hmm. then they say it's a disability. Yeah. But it's not. If more, because I have met so many people. And it's so funny that when you met me, you were like, you have ADHD? I was like, I don't know. Do I? And now I see it in everyone that I meet that has it. It's like, oh, my God, how did you not know you didn't have yeah. ADHD? Because it, they even say, like, we're attracted to each other. Like, birds of a feather flock together. And so I think a lot more people, like, more than, any, than, than doctors and all of them realize, like, I think it's probably half the people in society. Like, we actually, it's probably normal, like, before all the standards, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But because... The ones who created all the san- standards are like, no, this is how we're supposed to learn, and that's it. Then it's like, oh, you have a learning disability. Oh, you have the, you know? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't based on like the standards we have for society, like, oh, you have to work a nine to five, so you have to be up and you have to do things, like, we would live life a different way. Mm-hmm. Like, I, for the most part, live like, I catered to that. I catered to my lifestyle, to, to my ADHD. Like, I didn't have a nine to five job. Oh my God, when the pandemic hit and I didn't work, ew, I was thriving. <laughs> I was like, but then of course their guilt and the shame comes from this is not how society works. And if you want to get things done. So that's how I was like, okay, something's wrong because it took me all day to prepare for a Zoom show I had at yeah, eight o'clock at that, night. That, that is my problem. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, I'm realizing that society's time doesn't fit my standards. Because we don't, ha- time doesn't exist for us, first yes. of all. That is, uh, you have no idea, there is a, a major problem in my life where I'm like... No, I do have an idea. Writing, you have, you have a because lot of ideas. Because like three hours, I gave myself, I can give myself five hours to get ready and four out of those five hours will fly by and then I'm still rushing to be late. And the thing is, I always stop and think, what did I do with these four hours? Right. And I can't really tell you. No. It's all stuff. When I come back, I'm like, oh yeah, uh, this is mm-hmm. organized. <laughs> but this was not a problem. No one asked for this to be organized. Oh, I made a new playlist. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh Love my. that. <laughs> I found pictures that I that matches the dumb jokes of the playlists in all of oh my, my Spotify. Oh, my God. Do you see how I don't have yes. time to discover music? Yes. I am okay. finding the right thumbnails. There you go. Oh, my God. It's so true. When I first started taking Adderall, I, my mind, I'll never forget this. It was like, it was the day that I was like, holy shit, something was wrong yeah. or whatever. 
I just started taking it and then I made plans with a friend. It was, we had plans to go to dinner at six o'clock and then four o'clock rolls around and I was like, oh shit. Um, but I had taken Adderall that day. So she texts me at like 4.50 or something. She's like, we're still good for six. And I was like, oh yeah. I kid you not, like five, maybe 5.10, I jumped in the shower. And then I, I, not only did I get in the shower, I threw a load of laundry in. I, um, then I got ready. I was ready at 5.50. And I, I looked at the clock and I thought I was late. And I was like, I have time to get there on time. I, my mind was blown. I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is this sorcery? It's, yeah, it's a super, you feel like, oh my God, who has been hiding this from me? My yeah. Parents? yeah, it is so wild. Meanwhile, in uh, abusing Adderall lands here, <laughs> uh, I was taking a way bigger dose than I should have uh, and drinking a lot of coffee and weed, which means that I have a lot of attention and I was focusing mm -hmm. on nothing. So yeah. I would be like you. Oh, I have to leave at 5.50, yeah. okay? And I would get up at 5.10, get ready. Yeah. But in the middle, while I'm grabbing something from the kitchen, I'd look at the, at, <laughs> uh, at the fridge and mm. realize that the magnets are not well organized. Which is what's supposed to, the medicine's supposed to stop you from doing that. Now it makes me hyper-focus. Oh. On the magnets, Dude. I need to, and I would spend 20 minutes doing the magnets and then like, oh, what was it doing? I was leaving. Oh shit, I'm late. So have you tried just taking Adderall and not smoking weed and not drinking coffee? I stopped taking Adderall and enjoying my smoking weed and coffee now. So you prefer the weed and the coffee over the Adderall? Yeah. Okay. Because that also makes me focus. Oh, well then so, I guess you don't really need it. But no, I need to quit. Like it's, it's, a, I'm trying to not, I'm not trying to quit weed, spit the, these words out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, I'm just like trying not to wake and bake every day. Yeah. So I'm like, it's a reward at the end of the day mm -hmm. or whatever. If nice. I have a day off, it's not, I'm always high. I'm always high. I don't feel oh. it because I'm starting. It starts like, I start to feel it a little Yeah. in terms of like, I want to sleep. Yeah. And I notice how without weed, I'm like, I have so much energy that weed is just ah, tamping it down. Yeah. And because it's doing that, I can slow down and think slowly. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I start sentences and I don't know <laughs> what I was talking about. I mean, that's, Case in point that's now. all of our conversations. Yeah. I love, I love starting some, like starting somewhere and then com ending completely like far left field. Like, how did we even get here? I'm like, ah, eh, it doesn't matter. I, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But a lot of times I'd be in mid conversation and I have a lot of juice and I'm like, and then I went there and why was I telling you that? Oh my. I have no idea what, what story, yeah. <laughs> what was the point? What was the purpose? Oh my God. It's always this. And I, I feel every single time I have to adjust <laughs> every single time I, I like figure out something that I can focus on. Mm -hmm. I forget a lot of things. Yeah. So no. I'm like, Oh, make eye contact listen to the person <laughs> don't make a lot of noises while they're speaking <laughs> and then i would focus on that and be like i have no idea what they said oh I oh did, yeah i did everything that makes me look to be present i'm learning that in my acting class so that's actually helping mm. like, but um there was something i was gonna say and i forgot uh-huh oh, that's exactly what we were talking about oh no i remembered oh my god <laughs> i was saying like the coffee wasn't real i don't feel like it was really doing anything for me so i don't actually wait, 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 what do you mean like coffee, because you love coffee. And, oh, in and, real life, yeah. like without at all, yeah. it wasn't okay. Same. Coffee doesn't do anything. I just love the taste of coffee. S yeah. Like, why do you look at me like that? That's the point of drinking coffee. Okay, I was like, what? Yeah, so it was just a treat. So now if I have a busy day, then I won't drink coffee. Because I can't, it has nothing, like I have taken it on accident where I've taken like Adderall and then later in the day I'll drink coffee. It doesn't make me jittery. It like makes me sick to my stomach. Like mm -hmm. it irritates the hell out of it. I don't even think it has anything with the stimulation because I was always coffeeed up anyway. But it was it was really like I drank I think a Coke. No, I had I had Adderall in the morning and then I think by the afternoon I was like, oh, it's fine. Drank my Coke. I was I had to lay down because I was so nauseous. So I was born <sighs> with a Coke in my hand. Oh my God, me like, too. When I moved to America, I was 29. When I discovered for the first time that there's caffeine in Coca-Cola, I didn't know. <gasps> we are all drinking coffee at our caffeine oh, yeah. at 1 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we're going to go Mexicans to bed now. Mexicans too. Mexican, well, Latinos in general love their, their coffee. Well, yeah, that's why you needed a mm -hmm. ton amount of coffees just to be like, oh, this has an effect. Because oh, the baseline yeah. is there's caffeine mm -hmm. in your blood yeah. already. Well, I didn't even drink coffee when, until I was like well into my 20s. 
I would just drink monsters to keep going. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I was like, coffee, this ain't shit. I gotta, I gotta be at work at 8 a.m. and I'm coming home at 5, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I would drink like two monsters in a day and then just keep on trucking, bro. I was like, coffee, <laughs> it's for babies. <laughs> uh, um, we can do like the professional thing that they, I saw them do on podcast. What? Where you plug your dates. Oh. Do you have any dates? Oh my God, I do. Oh my God, do you remember them? Um, yes. <laughs> oh, you're so professional. Oh my God. Who Give me your thunk? dates. Okay, so Where can we see you? You Okay, so San Diego Ooh. can see me this Friday. I don't know the venue. <laughs> we jinxed it. I know. I didn't know the venue from the get-go. So okay. She, but it's going to be in Carlsbad. It's on my Instagram and my link tree, Maria Delaghetto everything. If you don't know how to spell Delaghetto, I don't know. Watch a movie. <laughs> Read a book? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it's September 23rd. At 7 o'clock at Wino Vino Wine Shop on Bar. I think it's in Silver Lake, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and then the place in San Diego is, still don't know the name. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was in my... Somewhere in San Diego and oh, at right. Wino Vino. Yes. Rituals. There was one ritual I wanted to tell you wait, about. Wait, 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 tell me. That I do, like, religiously every day before I leave the house and okay. I get in my car. I don't like when people ask me about it, but I want to tell you about it because... It's a ritual, and I love you. And okay. I'll tell you all my secrets. Yay. Um, so it's a, it's a religious thing, funny enough. So every day before I, when I leave, when I get in the car, I do the sign of the cross, like the thing. So that's one ritual. Like, I feel, um, and then it's funny because the OCD kicks in. I do it at least two or three times because I can't remember if I did it yet. <laughs> of course, yeah. That's ADHD plus OCD equal, yeah. like, just stuck in the same loop yeah. forever. I'm like, okay, did we do it? Okay, are you focused in the moment? Did you do it? Yes, we're good. Let's go. What happens if you were driving down the road, having a great day, and then suddenly you remember that I didn't I do it? I swerve off the road and I crash. No. <laughs> no, I... Uh, if I remember, no, you know what? There's never been a time that I don't do it because it's now it's like muscle memory. Like as soon as I get in the car before I do anything, it's like pa 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 pa. He's just gonna kill all the trinity. <laughs> yeah, kill all the bad juju. You ain't coming for me. Not today, Satan. Not today. And what if the, it was today, Satan? What happens? Like what is what is the well, worst case scenario? And then you just down. do it. That's yeah, it. It's fine. <laughs> that's the power of prayer. <laughs> I can't believe I said that in front of everybody. <laughs> But whatever, I'm a little bruja, whatever I need to do, it's fine. Well, that's not, not, that's not a, a bad, that's a very portable ritual to exactly. have. Exactly. There is no, oh my God, I have to do it at home. I have to drive back. Yeah, no. And go. <laughs> it's very portable. It is. I yeah. Like it's like, whatever you remember, okay, I didn't do it. Let yeah. me do All it. Right, let me just pat, pat, pat. But I just, I like one day, I don't want to push you there, but I just want to see what would happen if you didn't do it. I'm sure I have, but I'll, if, I, if I remember, I just do it. And then we're done. Problem solved. That's not even the ritual. That's like, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and again, uh, as usual, I don't know how to end podcast. So, podcast ends. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>